Welcome back to Retro Depot. Man, I've been excited about this video for a long time. Lots of you may not be aware of this project, but I am here to talk about the Omega Home Computer. Now, this is a two-board uh, computer, and it's something else. Um, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Um, the board was designed by a guy named uh, Sergey Kisilov. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Sergey, if I messed up your name, if I butchered it, I do apologize. Um, this guy is brilliant. Um, I've been following his stuff for a long time now, and he's one of the guys that kind of got me on the road to designing my own single board computers. But man, he's, he's something else. In the Retro Brew uh, forums, he's kind of a legend. Um, he's got several things that he's done, you know, talking about Z80 type stuff. Uh, he came out with the Zeta SBC and the uh, PAR port prop, which is a parallel port propeller uh, interface for the Zeta uh, SBC, which is a CPM based SBC with a um, well, the, the SBC itself actually has a serial as well as a um, floppy disk interface. And then the PowerPort prop um, implemented uh, VGA through the use of a propeller chip along with um, an SD card for storage and a couple other little features, uh, keep uh, PS2 keyboard input. Really an impressive board. He's got a couple other Z80 projects that he's done. Uh, one of them is the newer one that he did, the Tiny Z80, which is actually an RC2014 based um, uh, computer. It's compatible with the 2014 uh, footprint, but it's a standalone computer itself. Think of it as the entire, um, you know, for, for practically the entire uh, computer minus, I think, the VGA portion of it. but. It's got a lot of stuff built into it. Um, it's got an onboard CPLD. Um, the guy did the Easy Z80, which is very similar to uh, my G80S build, only um, I don't remember which software he wrote for it. I, I, I think he put maybe Microsoft Basic on it. Um, let's talk about 8088s. So he's done a full-size 8088 processor board back in 2010. He revamped it um, probably three, four years ago, which is the XI8088. And that one is, again, a full-size 8088 um, processor board on a ISA-sized uh, board. And it's designed like uh, SBC for like industrial equipment that you would plug into a backplane. Um, he also did the Micro 8088, which he used a integrated circuit that has a lot of the XT's functionality built into a single chip. So it's on like a half size card like this, or maybe a third size card. It's freaking tiny. Um, he did the um, uh, ISA Super VGA card that used the Trident's graphics controller. Um, he did a OPL2 board. He did a um, a copy of the CF uh, XTE or a uh, uh, CF uh, XT IDE uh, whatever it is um, basically the CF card adapter or it can also be used for an IDE uh, floppy disk controller he did a ISA um, a floppy disk uh, controller board he did a um, 8085 little micro SBC again uh, something like 100 by 100 uh, millimeters super tiny just super tiny this guy has done board after board after board after board and this right here is one of his later projects now I've actually had this board working for a while now and man I was super excited I'm drooling on myself man it's, it's that great this computer is fantastic this is the best job that he has done yet I don't have all of his projects but I've got a few and let me tell you, from what I've seen, this is the best thing that he's ever done so far. I, I've got faith in him that he's going to do more and it's going to be better. But right now, my money is on this because this is just that great of a computer. Now, you might be wondering what this computer is. Obviously, you see a gigantic uh, you know, 
uh, keyboard here, mechanical keyboard, you see, you know, it's stacked up dual layer. Well, it is a dual layer or a, a two board uh, package. You have to have two of them. Uh, the bottom board is obviously a processor board. It's a MSX compatible board, um, complete with uh, two slots, um, real time clock, um, pretty much everything. It's actually in between the MSX2 and the MSX2.5. So it, it's kind of in between those two as far as functionality is concerned. It's missing a couple things that the, um, the uh, MSX 2.5 would have. For example, the, um, uh, there's a particular register that you have to have. It's missing that. I think it's also missing a particular sound generator that it's supposed to have. But it does have the V9958, uh, the Yamaha V9958 uh, VDP. So it's got the graphics of the um, of the MSX 2.5, but it does not have the uh, full compatibility of such. But the second board is obviously just a keyboard, and there's not a lot on it. It's mostly just keys. It's got uh, two additional um, uh, uh, integrated circuits and a connector and a couple resistors and a, a single capacitor LED. So not much on it. Um, and most of that stuff is just for latching signals, and uh, one of them is actually an open collector uh, buffer. So, pretty simple stuff, but yeah, man, um, he did a fantastic job on this computer board. Um, I'll give you a little bit close-up of it if I can get it to focus. You're probably not getting a lot of light, but it's just beautiful. It really is beautiful. All the tracks, he did a fantastic job on this. Um, every single time that I see his work... I have to tip my hat to him because the guy is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal at building this. Now, um, the computer itself, it's pretty small, pretty lightweight. He actually designed this in a kind of a unique way. It wouldn't be the way that I would go, but of course he's the expert, not me. So, But he designs a lot of these things to be stackable, which that's cool. Um, you know, I don't have any problem with that. I've got a couple designs that were kind of stackable themselves. But for something like this, especially since I've actually been for months now, I've been working on a case design for it that I'm trying to get uploaded to the uh, Retro Brew forums, um, I actually kind of want it so that the keyboard can sit at the angle and be a little bit further back so it's kind of the shape of an actual MSX computer. But overall it works great the layout that he chose it was almost the perfect form factor for this particular board so I can't really criticize him any for that the only thing that it doesn't have that I wish it did was a uh, right angle button for reset which is a minor hiccup um, I've actually got a wired up uh, switch right here that goes back to a header on the board I can just bring it out and you know reset it like that so it's not a problem but um, yeah the, the, the board was fantastic and he went through probably five or six revisions of this board before he got it right and I don't even have the latest revision um, I've got version 1.1 I think he got up to like 1.2 or 1.3 he found a couple small changes he needed to make so it didn't really affect the functionality of it any I think a lot of it was mostly cosmetic I think that there was a couple footprint uh, naming issues and things like that but man, um, fantastic board. The only other issue that I have with it is, as you can see, it is 5 volt only. I hate it when people do that. Um, if you're going to have a barrel connector, make it 12 volt. Put some. I, I even prefer there to be a bridge rectifier because of the fact that every single time that you get one of these little plugs, you never do know if it's you know center positive, center negative put a bridge rectifier on it, put a switching, um, you know, uh, a converter on it and call it good. It doesn't take up much space. Now, in his defense, he didn't have the space on this board. Um, he really didn't. He probably did on the Zeta uh, SBC, but he did not have the space on this board to put it. I mean, there is no room there whatsoever to put a switching. I mean, he possibly could have done it by maybe making these capacitors for the outputs on the uh, video smaller but he was not going to be able to fit a ton of stuff on here um, it just wasn't going to happen I mean even if you compare that to um, 
my G8099 that I'm working on right here. This entire area here is the regulator portion of it. And if you put that into comparison, like he just would not have had room. Uh, th there's no way he could have stuffed that much stuff on there. It's just practically impossible. But that said, um, if he ever does do a, another version of this, I would very much like it if he did include a 12 volt um, input or at least some type of jumper that way you could you know if you wanted to use 5 volt you could I'm very fortunate in the fact that I do have a couple wall warts that are 5 volt only but man I hate these things and I hate them because if it were a different connector size for different voltages that would be one thing but with these things it's just like any size that they feel like using coupled with whatever voltage they decide to use I can't tell you how many times that I've gone to plug something in and I've grabbed one of these and almost plugged it in wrong. A couple times I've actually messed up. Didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it was not good. And that's just my biggest fear, especially with something like this. And I'll tell you why with something like this that you need to go ahead and have that is with a board this size with as many components many of which are not made anymore it's a very very expensive proposition to build one of these let me put this into a example for you you can go online and buy a MSX2 computer for somewhere in the area of let's say 150 to 400 dollars okay so 150 to 400 well, with these, with your PCBs, you're talking $20 a piece. That's 40 bucks. You've got probably a $100 to $120 worth of components, not including your V9958, your PSG, and a couple of other components that you can't readily find, like the, um, it's got a special real-time clock. It's uh, one that's specific for the MSX. I guess it was probably used in other things, but it's um, one that it, it's the only one that's really used with these computers. Once you track all those things down from guess where China, and you add in your shipping and your time, and then you throw in for an example the um, um, sockets for all of your ICs, which. In my particular case, I went with machine pin sockets that are gold plated from Phoenix connectors. Um, yeah, it gets expensive. Total cost of this build was about $250 to $300. I could have bought an MSX for that cost, but this is Sergey's uh, build. I his projects 100%. The guy is brilliant. I'm going to leave a link down below to his uh, website. It's even got his email address. The guy sells boards if you want some boards for part of his uh, for one of his projects that he's done. If not, the guy is super kind. He posts all of his Gerber files up on his website. So if he doesn't have boards, or even if he does, he doesn't care. The data's out there. It's open sourced as far as he's concer concerned he doesn't mind sharing it with you um super nice guy really is um i love every single project that i've had that he did just absolutely fantastic um he, he definitely gets two thumbs ups but the point that i'm getting at is i wanted to support him on this project because this is one that i wanted to see done for a very long time and i'll tell you why in the united states there are a handful of computers that we just didn't get and the MSX is one of them you can count a couple of those little strange machines that are out there that are like unicorns nobody actually sees them but as far as actual MSX computers we didn't get them here they got them in Europe they got them in Japan all over the place they got them in the Middle East uh, they got them everywhere but we did not get them and if you don't know what the MSX computer is, I, I don't even know where to start because I'm a retard whenever it comes to MSX computers. I, I'm not lying. I've never had the opportunity to really play with one. But I've always wanted one because of what they were.
they were the gaming machine that I didn't even knew existed until probably the mid night or the mid two thousands. I may have heard mention of them once or twice back in the nineties, but I never knew what you know what they were. I didn't know what people were talking about. And of course, I did grow up in rural Oklahoma, so I mean, we just didn't have any knowledge about this kind of stuff here. And back then, the internet was so new, like that just wasn't in the little circle of you know websites that I would typically frequent. But I've always wanted one since I found out what they were. But because you can't get them here, I couldn't afford to buy one because I couldn't afford the import. Now it's easier, but you're still making a substantial uh, investment whenever you purchase an MSX because even the cheaper ones, you're going to run into several things. You're going to have a problem getting a power supply a lot of times. And the reason why I say that is because, especially ones coming out of Japan, they don't have power supplies a lot of times. It gets lost. Or if it's from the UK, it's expecting an entirely different voltage and you have to figure something out. And a lot of times these are like the power cord is connected to the computer. It's not like an IEC plug that you can pull out and replace with the right prongs. Like it's wired in, it's got the perfect transformer for the voltage it was designed to use. You cannot plug it into 120 and expect it to work. You're just not going to. And so that's a problem. Then, if you do end up finding one from the UK, for example, um, it's a PAL machine, which is useless to you. So you need a Japanese machine. The problem with that is, half the time the keyboard can't even be read because it's in kanji, and I don't speak kanji. So it's got all kinds of problems, man. That's the reason why I was so excited about this, because he actually went and patched the ROMs. He, or, well, better he didn't patch the ROMs. He doesn't even provide the ROMs. What he does is he provides a program that if you run it in a folder with the ROMs in there, it patches those ROMs for you. And it makes it towards uh, like international layout, but you know, in English and all the good stuff that you need. Now it still has the kanji text in there because that's, I believe that's hard coded into the ROM itself. So there's still a sub layer of Japanese in there somewhere, but that's beyond my technical knowledge of the MSX. It really is a machine that is completely to its own. But enough um, patent Sergey on the back. Great job, man. You guys, if you haven't checked out his website, go down there and check it out. Order some boards from this guy. Keep this guy afloat. This guy is probably the best, um, you know, Amateur, well, I don't even know if he's an amateur. He's a guy maybe like a doc, doctor in engineering or something. I don't know. But he's the best guy that we have in the community as far as design goes, bar none, period. I don't care what anybody says. This guy, he knows his stuff. So check him out. Support him. If nothing else, buy a small Z80 board from him. I mean, the guy's that great. He deserves the extra cash flow because he dumps a lot of money into this stuff. It's a very expensive hobby to try and design boards especially of this size like even my G8099 that I'm working on it's nothing compared to what he spent on this machine and I've spent a pretty good chunk on that so check this guy's website out buy something from him if you can afford it other than that we're going to get into the MSX right now and uh, first we're going to start with a teardown let you kind of see what's going on on the inside and then after that we'll play some games all right Okay, so we got the MSX here, um, or the Omega, if you will. I'm just going to take these screws out real quick. Um, I've only got four holding this on, so it won't take but just a moment. Um, as I mentioned before, the keyboard um, is a standalone board. There's not really a whole lot to it. It's got uh, two ICs. One is a 74 uh, LS145. The other is a 74LS07. It's got a couple of resistors. It's got a, um, a couple switching diodes, a capacitor, a connector, and a um, resistor pull down. Uh, give you an idea, that's the back of the board there. Uh, of course, these are Cherry uh, compatible switches. Uh, the ones I'm using are actually Gator on because they may not be quite as good as Cherry's, but they are cheap. And they're pretty reliable, believe it or not. Most of the uh, keyboards you buy these days actually have Gator on them instead of the MS or the uh, Cherry MX. Now, once we get the keyboard pulled off, 
we got our main board here as you can see this is that reset um, switch that I have wired up so it's got a very tiny header just to the other side of it that's for interrupts I believe um, have to go back and look at the uh, schematic on it but I'm pretty sure it's interrupts um, where to start so uh, 5 volt only it does have a connector here for both 12 volt positive and negative for the cartridge ports um, if you have a cartridge that needs those you can hook that up there I just got the blank uh, uh, cable connector there so I can always wire that up later if I need to uh, again it does have the V9958 it has a uh, YM 2149F which is the uh, I think it's the PSG uh, Z80 CPU, a um, um, 8255 PIO, flash ROM, uh, uh, non-volatile uh, flash ROM, and then um, uh, SRAM. Uh, it's got a couple PLDs here. It's got a uh, mi uh, microprocessor supervised chip. It's the ADM, uh, let me see. 691A or 691A, I think. Of course, we also have a real time clock down here. Um, we have a Sony uh, uh, video converter for the uh, RGB S video composite video. Um, what else? What else? Oh, we have our uh, optional PAL circuit right here. Um, a couple of the resistor or capacitor values on the uh, other part of the board are a little bit different if you choose to go PAL, but with that it still works. It's just your video quality isn't as great. It's got a uh, reset supervisor circuit as well as an audio amplifier. The rest of it is mostly just logic, a lot of buffers and uh, registers that are there. Um, it does have an expansion port over here um, for um, up to four megabytes of total memory so it's got a pretty substantial amount of memory and then um, this here is a tape uh, connector as well as a um, Centronics compatible uh, printer port we also have uh, two uh, game ports here uh, for uh, game pads which I don't have any game pads I need to either build some or buy some but I haven't been happy with the options that I've found available online, so I'll probably end up trying to modify a Sega Genesis controller or something along those lines. But, um, yeah, it's got a lot of stuff on this board. There's a lot of stuff going on. He did a really good job at this. Um, we got some standoffs here with some little rubber feet on them so that we can um, keep from scratching up our countertop whenever we've got it on here. Other than that, um, not a lot to see on the PCB. It, I mean, you have to actually take a look at the schematic of this thing to see how enormously complex it is. But again, it does have uh, two ports, which is nice. My other MSX that I have, um, it only has uh, one port. It's this MX10, and of course this is an MX, or a MSX1. Um, now it does have an expansion port around the back right here but that's for a proprietary uh, expander which is actually not as a, uh, proprietary as they would like you to believe I found the pinout for it and I'm thinking about actually doing an uh, expander to uh, do a breakout for a couple more cartridge ports which should actually give it quite a bit of um, um, expandability but yeah I mean it's, it's amazing design. He did a really good job on it, and as you can see, I mean, he does have the um, open source hardware logo on here. He provides all that stuff on his website, and this is the version 1.1 of the uh, main board. The keyboard is version 1.0. Uh, you might be able to see it in there. So that's it for the board. Um, let's get this thing put back together, and we are going to play some games okay here we go time to play some games well first off we gotta take a look at the software so we get the typical boot screen 512 kilobytes it does boot up an MSX basic version 3.0 I believe that there is also an option for version 2.0 but I'm not entirely certain of that 
Um, you know, basic is a pretty simple basic. We're going to do a modified version of my uh, uh, three line code. We can type run. Probably had a hard time hearing that. Let me turn the volume up just a little bit. We can uh, type the code or we can actually hit F5 and run. So, and if we So, there we go. I'm going to turn that volume down, otherwise you're going to get blasted out. Now, I'm going to be using the SD512 here. Um, this is a flash cart for the MSX that I actually need to do a separate video on. Um, I've been real happy with it, but that's only once I get it working. So. I'll talk with you about that in another video, but we're going to go ahead and boot up into it. Now, whenever it boots up, it boots up into the uh, Nextor driver, which is a, uh, think of it as a uh, MSX DOS driver for, um, or it's actually a DOS operating system, really, for um, uh, SD cards and things of that nature. So it's a different kernel altogether, but and again, I'm not the expert on MSXs. I've always wanted one, but how to use one, I've never really had a chance until I got to this. So, you know it is what it is. But this is a pretty uh, full version of uh, MSX DOS. Uh, we can type help, and we get a help menu here that gives us lots of stuff we can you know ask questions about all this different stuff so uh, for example um, echo we'll uh, check out echo once we get to the end we actually have to scroll through all of these in order to get out of it though so that's kind of an annoyance but so if we type help echo it gives us the information about the uh, command echo and uses and examples and things like that but um, let's take a look at the file system here um, we can also do backslash w and get a little bit less information there a little bit more compact um, pretty much the typical stuff that you would see in any type of DOS um, so if we wanted to edit for example autoexec.bat Oh, well, maybe we can't. Uh, let's see here, editor. Ah. And it's Ted. So it will open up with our uh, auto exec file and I know that the 80 columns doesn't really look that good my understanding is that's a uh, really because of the composite video um, if I had S video it should be a little bit better or if I were using let's say the RGB it would be even better um, interestingly enough this computer actually does have whatever that European RGB funky weird shaped D sub connector is on the back of it I actually bought this TV whenever I was in Kuwait so yeah um, we got that but that's a different story so um, now we need to actually get out I think it's F3 no might be F4 yep F4 and Q for quit Yes, for sure. Now, this is where it gets weird. What we need to do, and I don't know if this is a program, uh, just an issue with uh, the TED uh, editor, or if it's actually a program with the computer itself. But it does this when we um, exit out of TED. So if I run. A 
autoexec.bat, it corrects everything, gets it back to where it needs to be. So I think it's just a problem with Ted, but yeah. As long as you know about the little problems with it. Matter of fact, a reset would do the same thing. You wouldn't have any problems. But let's uh let's get to some games. So in the apps folder, I have a folder called Sofa, and that's for Sofa Run. So you can see we've got a lot of files in here, but the sr.com is the Sofa Run file. And um, if I've actually already set it up, we can just type sf or sr rather from the uh, root directory of A and it will launch Sofa Run. And Sofa Run is pretty cool because it's like a game launcher. So this is the menu that you get and of course you can see there's quite a few games in this front menu here but if you actually go up to um, the double periods you can uh, uh, this download that I got it's got them all broken out by um, uh, by name alphabetical order I guess you could say and then also it's got a couple broken out by size but um, let's let's oh I'm not there let's go to a because one of the favorite games that I have on this computer believe it or not is going to be if I can get to it uh, I think it's 256 yeah here we go uh, it's actually this one right here last uh, favorite for a lot of people on the um, MSX but I think you'll see why it's a really cool um, top-down shooter now you gotta remember this is only mono audio but it's got a pretty cool little intro But of course, I can't read Japanese, so. Yeah. But if we go to the start screen, it has a really cool uh, soundtrack. And I might add that this is actually a really difficult game, at least with a keyboard, and at least for me. So we're going to just start off with level one here. And as you can see, it's got a lot of stuff going on. And this game is one of those games that gets so much stuff going on in the screen that it actually slows down. So. Really, really fun game. Now, the biggest problem that I have with Sofa Run, or with any of these game launchers, is the fact that you can't really exit out of the game um, because of the way it is. See, all these were cartridge games, and the way the Sofa Run works is it actually takes the game, it, make, it can make some patches to it, but then it turns around and it loads it into uh, memory space and then it um, essentially jumps to that location and starts executing it as though it was a cartridge. So in order to actually get out of the game, you are going to have to um, reset the computer. Um, I haven't found any other way to um, get out of the game. So. One of the minor little problems with, you know, uh, this type of accessibility with a older computer is when you add things like this to it, 
um, you inherently are going to end up having some problems with things like that. Just minor inconveniences, so to speak. But But I'm happy with it. I mean, you know, it, it's a fun enough game for sure. Yeah, that's probably the best I've done. This is actually a really hard game, um, at least for me. I, I never did play this particular game growing up, so I don't really know a lot about it, but I think that they also released it or some games that were very similar to it on the Sega Genesis. So, anyhow, that's enough for that. Let's check out something else. So we are loading up uh, Fantasy Zone here. Uh, Fantasy Zone 2. Fantasy Zone. It's a pretty cool little game. Um, I think this was actually a MSX uh, game. Like an MSX1. Got lots of colors on it. Kind of hard to tell where you're at sometimes, but like I said, it's not a bad game. The only problem with it is it obviously does not take advantage of hardware scrolling. Um, you can tell that by the roll of the screen. And I will be honest with you, I have not ever actually gotten farther than that. The game just doesn't do that much for me. Let's check out something else. So we are loading up 1942, another shooter. Uh, this is mostly just to give you an idea as far as what you looked at as on what you were looking at as far as 1942 on the MSX versus other computers. You gotta remember this was uh, designed for the MSX1 which was a very uh, limited processor where it concerned the VDP. The VDP uh, was capable of hardware, uh, graphics, and sprites, but the biggest issue with the VDP is that the sprites were only allowed to be one color. Um, it was just limited. It, it was great for its time, but it was limited. And as a result, um, Computers that use the MSX often were over, or you know, overshadowed by games such as the, um, or well, uh, systems such as the NES, the Sega Genesis, and things like that. Even the Sega, uh, well, the Sega Master System. If I'm not mistaken, the Sega Master System actually used a modified version of the VDP, but the uh, graphics were quite a bit better on it. But. That gives you an idea as far as the um, difference between 1942 on, say, an NES and a uh, MSX. Okay, so this is another one. It's called Aliens. You may have heard of it before. You can tell they're loading in uh, sprites for the text right there because they're loading in one at a time and it's not a complete character so okay so that's how we jump That's a little bit of a hard jump. I have no idea what I'm... Oh! Well, 
That was interesting. <laughs> Lots of weird games on this system, for sure. Here's one that you might find interesting. Yep, that's Mario Brothers Adventure. Arcade style. So, that was one of the big things about the MSX. They were really into arcade games in Japan. And this actually looks like it's a clone. Anyhow, interesting little game there. Well, that's it for the MSX computer. Um, I love this thing. If you get a chance and you want to build this, you need to contact Sergey. Or uh, if he doesn't have any boards, you can always order some boards. Uh, he's got the Gerber files up. Um, if nothing else, though, go show this guy some love. Purchase, if nothing else, a small Z80 board from him or something. This guy really deserves a little bit of extra funding because of the projects he does. He's done some amazing stuff. I kid you not, some absolutely amazing computers over the you know last decade or so. And uh, he doesn't get any recognition. Um, I know I had about a 20-minute speech at the beginning of the video about him, but guy deserves 15 minutes of fame. He's not going to get it from me because not that many people watch my channel, but hopefully somebody else will see it. And they'll do a video and give him the proper love where love is due. That said, um, yeah, it's been a great little computer. I built it back in, I want to say, February to April. And then I think I actually got it working sometime around April to May. Um, sat it on the shelf after I uh, played with it for a little while um, in order to take care of some things that were going on during this apocalypse. But I'm glad I finally got a chance to shoot a video on it. And... Um, yeah, I'll probably do a follow-up video once I get a proper case designed for it. Um, other than that, though, uh, you got a chance to see the SD512 um, and the ability to load up some games. Um, I didn't really, you know, go through and pick, you know, the best games of the system or anything like that. I just showed you some games that were commonly available. Um, the image for the SD512 comes with, you know, some games preloaded on it from the guys at Google Drive account. So that's kind of handy, um, but again, I don't know a ton about the MSX, um, so yeah, I, it's just not something I grew up with, so I don't know all the ins and outs, but like I said, I am very happy. I'll probably do a separate video on that. Um, the DOS, like you see, is you know pretty straightforward. It's exactly what you would expect Microsoft DOS to be, only it looks a little bit different and has a few different features on it. But, yeah, altogether, great project. Um, go check out Sergey's website. I'm going to leave it uh, linked below. Uh, check out my blog. You know, if there's something that you've got questions about, you're always welcome to post comments here or contact me via the website. Um, if you have some type of computer that you have designed and you're wanting somebody to take a look at it, I would love to take a look at it for you. Get in touch with me, and I'll be more than happy to go through it and see, you know, what it's capable of and kind of the ins and outs. I'm not the best at programming or doing demos or anything like that, but I do enough of stuff with, you know, these types of computers that I'd be happy to take a look at it. And, you know, hey, I'm always, you know, happy to take a look at other people's stuff. I had a couple guys send me some boards off the Facebook group. But, yeah, thanks for uh, staying around for this part of the video, and um, we're going to try to get some more content uploaded this year since you got almost nothing during the apocalypse. Uh, let's face it, I don't think anyone actually thought about you know just uploading YouTube videos except for people that just live and breathe YouTube. But I am personally planning on uh, getting some more content up. I've got a little bit of a backlog right now of uh, videos that are uh, coming down the pipeline. So we will see how far we can go with the material that we have on hand and uh, probably take a break sometime during the summer, but plan on releasing at least a couple videos a month um, for you know the foreseeable future. Other than that, um, yeah, 
guys hit that like button if you are not subscribed please subscribe like I mentioned before those things really help with boosting the metrics and getting this information out to other people that may be interested in this type of equipment and these types of games and uh, computer stuff that we do and you know even just retro gaming man I, I love playing video games and not just old video games new video games I've got the retro play uh, series that I do from time to time and believe it or not one of the games I'm thinking about doing is Doom 3 because while lots of people hate it, lots of people love it, and personally, I never played it up until about a month ago, and it was fantastic. I love that game. That game is a great survival horror game. Now, it's clearly not a Doom game, but it's a great game. So, like I said, um, check out some of my other stuff. Share this if you liked it. Um, thumbs up. You know, like I said, subscribe. Check out Sergey's, and we will see you next week.